Hello and welcome to Frank's DIY and Home Improvement Help. Uh, I'm Frank and I'm going to build a closet in this space that you see here. So this is a, the basement of a house that we bought and moved into. Fairly new reno, top to bottom, but they just haven't left us enough indoor closet space. So this is a huge basement area, um, but it has no closets. It has storage uh, that's like a cantina style cold room storage but we want some warm storage in here. So we're going to take this space, which just comes down from a staircase here into this big room, which is a mess, but it'll give you an idea of what we got here. Erica and Tower playing. Hi. And um, so the, we thought the least intrusive way to make a closet, which would be to extend the wall that comes down from the stairs here, Extend this out about 28, 30 inches and just build the, the closet here. It doesn't cut into the room space much. It's an area that's not used because the TV and the action all happens over there. And uh, so that's what we're going to do. So in a nutshell, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove baseboards. I'm going to cut away the carpet so that I can put the base plates right on the floor. And, uh, and then mark it all out, frame it, install a double door, double closet door drywall and trim so it's going to be the whole works from beginning to end and i'll try not to make the video too long but hopefully it'll uh, help you f make uh, make your basement all right thanks for joining me we'll edit him up okay so with the baseboards removed now i'm going to mark the locations of the studs on all the walls. This is where it's really handy to have a laser level. You don't have to have one. You can get away with uh, with just a straight level and carpenter squares and that type of thing. Uh, but a laser level will allow me to mark off the entire wall, everything, everything where I want it to go, including the space for the doors. And that'll make it a lot easier for me to determine where things have to go uh, because they're marked off. The only difference is, the only thing I won't do is, because I'm coming off of this wall here, I'm going to come off the level of this wall. It's pretty darn close to level. I'm going to mark back one half an inch from the edge of this wall all the way down because we need to leave space for the drywall. And, uh, and then I'll take all the rest of the lines off of this line. So this is where I start. I'll mark up the carpet and I'll cut it out. And then I'll start laying boards down. Okay, so now with my first wall reference line here, I'm going to take a measurement of this line off the wall, and that measurement is where the end of this first wall will be, all right? And again, you could do, do it this way, or you could decide to square off the other wall or come perpendicular off this wall. This is the way I'm deciding to do it by measurement. Okay, so I've marked the four corners off on the carpet, and now because we have two reference points for each wall, one here, one there, one here, one over there, now we can put our laser on it because we have two references. It's just like a gun sight. You want one reference to line up with the other. Now if we put the laser on those two references, we get the lines for the ceilings all the way across, mark the whole thing off, and you're ready to frame, or you're ready to cut at least. Okay, so here we have an issue, which happens a lot in framing, right? Your house is never square, and you are going to run into problems because of that. And here's my first problem right here. You see how my line goes up really nicely? My laser line goes along my pre-marked line for the drywall anyway, but then it gets to the top here, and look what happens. See, we lose it. We lose the line because this uh, box here is not perpendicular to that wall, right? So again, for the purposes of this construction, I'm gonna follow this line because that's the easiest thing to do and it's the least unsightly thing to do. Yes, it's not square off that wall, but none of the house is square. Uh, that's just the way construction goes. So you do have to notice that. So instead of marking my vertical line with the laser now, 
all I'm going to do is again mark one half of an inch inside from the edge of this box and that's where my wall is going to go. At least this wall is not going to work the way I want it to work but it'll still be fine. Okay, so now you can see the markings in the carpet. There's the, the first wall, or two walls. You can see I've marked up right up here. And I've marked across as well with just one laser shot. Get it all the way across the top, down that far wall, and then down to the other wall. So it's all marked up. What I'll do is I will... Uh, I'll cut the carpet about uh, a quarter inch outside of where I've marked it. Uh, that gives me a little bit of wriggle room for the base plates and it also uh, allows more than enough space to have the carpets covered with the final product because you're going to have the, the two by fours which are three and a half inches and you're going to have a half inch of drywall and then in this case I'm going to have about another three quarter inches of baseboards. So as long as I have the carpet outside of the the 2x4 space but well inside the rest of the space, the space for the drywall and the uh, baseboard. Your laughing carpet gets pinched under there, it'll never unravel because you're not going all the way across anyway and it'll look really good. So here you see how clean the carpet cut happened. I still have the under pad there so I'm just going to remove the under pad with the knife and then also at the edges of the carpet you've got this wooden carpet grabber thing which I'm just going to cut inside of the uh, of the carpet. So under there and under there. Staying clear of those nails. I'll probably take those nails with me. I'm going to cut that with an oscillating tool because the oscillating tool just zips right through it no problem. And we're ready for um, vapor barrier underneath and we're ready to lay down some walls. I just want you to see how easily this oscillating tool, the awesome oscillator I call it, zips through this wood down here. So it's a uh, it's a wood tip on this and you just don't push all the way down and as soon as it gets through the wood it kind of stops itself. You don't have to dig into the concrete. Even if it does touch the concrete a little bit, it doesn't really hurt the blade too much. One, two, zip, zip, and then just a little pop gets it out. All right, just like that. Okay, so I've now measured out, cut, and dry fit my pieces. And the reason why I dry fit them is just to make sure that my distance for my door frame here, my rough door frame opening, has to be a certain amount. I want to make sure that was right before I finally put any of these in. I've put a vapor barrier underneath so it's all ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is pre-drill these pieces so I can drive, I can use my concrete driving gun to drive a few nails into this to secure that into the ground. That's the next step and then we're starting to put the vertical pieces on. Using this concrete driver to uh, drive home the nails that are going to bring the base plate in, right? And I love this tool. Um, so. There's different versions. There's an actual one that's an actual gun that you just pull the trigger, but this one you hammer down on that. You insert this 22 cartridge in it, and there are a bunch of different uh, sizes of cartridge. As you can see here, this is the number four out of five. That tells you how much powder charge you're using to blow the nail in. And the nail is this ram set nail, which does a great job in the concrete. So using all the protection, proper protections to hammer those in, and we'll get and I pre-drilled the holes, put the vapor barrier down underneath. I'll 
hit the first one over there just on the lines that I've marked and then I'll set up the laser to make sure the other one is straight. Normally you'd put the base plate all the way across the opening of the of the door frame there and then cut it out but um, but you can't with the carpet because it doesn't sit flush so you have to do it in two pieces and it's great to have the laser to put right across there when you're nailing it in just to make sure it's a perfectly straight line. Now here's something that's never happened to me before. The nail just didn't go in. The nail just bent right underneath. And that's a problem. Now I've got to get this nail out and it's not going to be fun. I'll give it a try to get it out. And if not, I will probably either cut another board or cut the nail off. That's never happened before. Okay, so I did manage to pull the nail out. I have no idea why that happened, but it's never happened before. So let's just try it again and see if, uh, see if it will or will not happen again. It may be that, um, that that number four, is it number four or number five? It may be that number four is a bit too much of a charge, too high a charge, and I have to go down to like a number three or a two. So this nail didn't go in either. Look at this. No idea why this is happening. It's never happened before. So I'm going to try and change the variables here. Maybe uh, hit another nail at a different location. Maybe it's something to do with the concrete right there in that corner. But yeah, it's never happened before. Okay, so I ended up trying it one more time and it worked uh, in a different hole actually. So. I'll hit the rest of the nails in this board and see how the board feels, see if I'm happy with it, and then either not hit in that same spot where we've had the problems, or try it one last time. So like I say, this is the first time I've put in, I don't know, probably four or five walls where I've uh, needed to drive wood into the uh, concrete basement floor. I've never had this issue before, so it's a bit of a surprise. Let's see if, uh, if it was a one of or if it persists. And I'm setting the nail right into the pre-drilled spot so that I know I don't split the wood. Yeah, so that is much better. It's in a real good spot, so I'll just keep hitting them. Okay, so that worked a lot better. I put five nails in there. And it is absolutely solid. So uh, I'm not going to try and put the sixth one in because whatever, maybe it's something that's going on in that area where it's not uh, it's not accepting nails. So I don't want to push it any further. I am now going to put the laser down to get my straight line for the front wall of the uh, closet, and then put in my nails there as well. And this is the beauty of doing all the pre-marking is that now I can put that laser, and as long as I line up all the stuff. All the markings that I did above and on the far wall, this line has to be perfect. So I'll show you what I did here with the laser. I started off lining up the end of the board there. See how it's just on the edge of the board? And then I lined it up with all the markings I put on the walls and the ceilings. So you see that's all lined up, all lined up all the way around. So that means that as long as I line up these two pieces, which are still loose, as long as I line these up with the laser, it should be perfectly square and perfectly plumb. Perfect, huh? Well, it doesn't always work out that way, but we'll see. At least the plan seems solid. We'll see how the execution goes. Another one that didn't work here, and this is really starting to cause me some concern. I've only got, what, five or six shots to do here, but if this keeps happening, I'll never get it done. So I'm going to pull this nail and try again. Okay, so one thing I noticed with that last one that didn't go in so well was that the concrete underneath it all kind of 
disintegrated away, it kind of became chalk-like, and, and driving another nail in there probably would have been useless. So I drove the nail right beside it, and it worked fine. So I just need to drive maybe, maybe three more, and this piece is done. I also wonder if maybe I hit it on an angle. So it could have been operator error. I've, I'll be interested to check the video and see what if it gives me any of that info. But, uh, all these other ones have gone in absolutely textbook. So maybe it's me screwing up with my hammer hits. They haven't been as steady as hits. Probably noticed. One more. Then we'll move on to the next one. Better. All done. All right. So now we can start putting up the, the header. I'm just going to use one header as opposed to two. It's not load bearing and I don't think I need the two headers so we'll line them all up and set them all up. Next thing I did is I went and marked the joists here, the floor joists above and it was easy to find the way everything was running by just dropping this light, sticking my, my uh, iPhone in there and having a record and looking and feeling and I marked off where all the joists are so that this entire header now has good solid nailers uh, down this wall, I kind of lucked out here, and there happens to be a stud right along where the uh, where the vertical piece is going to go here. So now it's just a quest question of cutting the top plates, screwing them in, and then connecting top to bottom, and your framing is done. Okay, so there you see that um, the top plate is up completely now. I don't need to put a top plate here because I'm going to go with uh, uh, a stud here and a stud right up against this box. So we don't need anything there. The space is about 16, 16 and a half on center. So that will be just perfectly fine. Now we just start putting the studs up from there all the way around. Frame out the door. Bob's your uncle. We're almost done. Here's something that you can run into and it is crooked boards. So you see these two boards are shouldering each other and the bottom there are lined up pretty good. Not much of a space, they come up nicely here. But then nearing the top, a big space opens up and that's because the boards are twisted. And if you look at, at it from this side too, this side pretty nice and nice and square there, but then as you go up, same type of thing, you start seeing a bit of a space there. You see that gap? So we're going to close those spaces with wood clamps, with C-clamps, just to make them perfect. Uh, again, framing, you don't really have to be perfect. You can be quite happily within, you know, a quarter inch here or there. But where, where you've got two pieces side by side like that, shouldering each other, you got to have them really f nice and flush or else the drywall is not going to fit properly. All right, so we'll clamp it up and that should fix the problem. I won't make it too tight until I uh, 
close this side too because that one's going to be much more difficult to move. flush all four ways nice and tight hammer it up and that's it that's it so that's the framing done now put all the pieces together and I'm really happy with the job and I'm happy with it not just because uh, I've done it I'm happy with it because it is solid I was able to find nailers everywhere um, this piece here is right against the stud um, all the, the top plate, the entire top plate is, uh, is into the floor joists above. That piece over there in the corner is right against that corner, 2 by 4 We've got pieces into the box there, and of course the cement floor, nails into the cement floor, although that was a little trying, it worked out alright. The only thing in this job that isn't really ideal is the fact that I couldn't maintain level on this box up there because it was not perpendicular to the wall so um, this is how far we're out though and that's not too bad it should really be the wall should really be about there um, but for framing it looks solid you really had no choice because you have to end up feathering into this existing wall with your half inch drywall and into the box up top. Same type of thing, half inch drywall. Now, uh, the next thing to do is hang closet double doors, but I'll do that in the next video. So, uh, just a little fair warning and disclaimers here. I'm certainly not a licensed trade person. I'm just a dude that owns a house and knows a little bit about carpentry and framing and such. Uh, building codes could vary in your area, so you figure out what you've got to do to, to satisfy that requirement. Um, and tools. Um, you don't have to use the tools that I use, right? Laser level is fantastic. That laser level that I've got is the DeWalt, cost about like 450 bucks Canadian. So, you know, 20 bucks American, something like that. I don't know. No, uh, substantially less American, but uh, it's a fantastic tool. If you're going to do a lot of framing or a lot of carpentry, it is really, really valuable. Uh, but you don't have to have it. Just a level and a carpenter square, and you can do exactly the same thing. Might just take you longer, might just not be quite as, as exact. Uh, air gun, you don't need. Screw gun, hardly use the screw gun here at all, but uh, that's about it. The rest is just basic carpentry, and you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And thanks for joining me. I'm Frank's DIY and Homeowner's Help.